Good morning, folks. With the planets lining up in just four days, we're wading through what could be the last day or so of decreased solar activity before we get an uptick. No big solar flares or CMEs in the last day, just a couple incoming features I'm keeping in focus. As I said, solar flaring is low. Breaking out of B range is a challenge for our star at the moment. The sunspots are few, small, not mixing magnetically, or not yet in position to be geo-effective. The most interesting feature to study overnight was the CME impact that originated from those northern SNAP CMEs late last week. Now some experts are claiming the CME has missed Earth, but I think there's a good chance that what we saw yesterday morning with the BZ turn, phi angle reversal, density peak, trough out of the speed, and rising plasma temperature was the interplanetary shockwave we had been expecting. It was a weak impact, so Earth Shield isn't having any trouble, but a CME, I believe it was nonetheless. Next coronal hole incoming down south, red, negative, but yet again it is almost imperceptible on SDO. I actually think that bright sunspot group left of center is blocking visibility. Its force shows as being quite powerful, albeit confined to the southern polar area, We'll watch going forward, especially because its power is highly confirmed by the secondary solar wind estimator. Top quakes of interest the last day were an uptick hitting opposite sides of the Indian Ocean fault zone, with a volcano beginning to erupt right in the middle of them. Also, if you missed it last night, we had an earth spot quake where the super typhoon got its power. It was barely significant before crossing over Guam and strengthening like crazy. Well, that exact location took a solid tremor yesterday afternoon. As it is, the typhoon is still slated to miss Japan landfall. Top story today is about how the Antarctic sea ice is growing so much that they're going to have to start moving their bases down there. If you're confused because you only hear about how their math says the sheet should be disappearing soon, I prefer observations to computer models and the actual measurements we took down there show it's way thicker than believed. FYI, while the Arctic up north is still well below the average, Antarctic ice is still breaking records every day for highest ice extent in recorded history. Looks like a tropical storm in the north central states, doesn't it? This system is not going to drive as large a watch area this evening, but down in Texas and then a bit up and down along the convergence line we will have those storms. My bet is the worst weather hits the south, eye your forecasts around lunchtime. Over in Europe, the southern low is still spinning, but the cloud line to the north off the Atlantic low has strengthened once more and is now a larger coverage event than the southern storm cell, with the flood potential being nearly as dangerous. We are trying to locate the convergence line from yesterday. Today you'll need to just see the macro scale airflow to determine it's not much further east than it was before, still drawing that cloud line down across Australia there. Folks, if you do something awesome like this observer who got an eyes open no fear tattoo, that is so worth a shout out and probably a lifetime membership to suspiciousobservers.org. Ground level edition of the current conditions followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.